Mr. Mr. President, President Sam Keith, Chairman of the Board. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you. God bless you. Good to see you. And Jack Price, who's the National President. Mr. President, how are you, sir? Good to see you, sir. General Charles Donnelly, the Executive Director. Oh, yes, sir. Director. Good to see you again. Nice to see yes, you, sir. And Ken Goss, the Deputy Executive Director. Mr. President. Good to see you, sir. We'll put two of y'all on each side here. Sure. Right. 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 No, well, I feel good. I know I'm a charter member of the Air Force Association. It's quite a quite a thing for the horse cavalry. It's not too heavy. <laughs> no, we recognize <laughs> your partners. Uh, listen, I was going to thank all of you and do thank all of you for yours. All of our defense problems. Thank you for all the help you've been. The work that you do for education for young and partnership with the private sector. Who wants you to know AFA is in good hands? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I know it is. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Mr. President. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Did I interrupt anyone? No. <laughs> to turn around the American economy, and I don't have to remind you that interest rates were soaring and inflation was in double digits and productivity was down, and then through some accident, with the United States losing its preeminent position in the world economy, somehow all those things changed. <laughs> well, we knew that the root problem didn't lie with the American worker or manager or any inability to innovate and create. But I believed, and had believed long before I came here, that government simply had to get out of the way and give American firms a chance to compete. I think that government tended to have an adversarial relationship with our own business community. So we went to work and we cut taxes, as you know, and we reduced the regulatory burden and we urged stable monetary growth and slowed government spending, and during that time, you streamlined and modernized. On that regulation thing, it isn't very generally known, but I put George Bush in charge of a task force to see how many of those regulations of the federal government we could wipe out. Our estimate is that we eliminated enough regulations to reduce the burden of paperwork imposed on you and the people and the communities and state and local governments and so forth by 600 million man hours a year. So, I don't know what you're doing with that extra time. <laughs> <laughs> These efforts, as well as against our, or our fight against unfair trade practices, has resulted in a stronger and more competitive America than ever before, as we all know. Productivity is up, our exports are of the highest quality and at competitive prices, and we now are in a manufacturing export boom, and the recent monthly figures uh, prove that. We've struggled to bring America back to its preeminent position in the world economy, and I think our efforts have been successful, but we can't stop here. We've got to keep going, and I, I have some unfinished business remaining. Next month, I'll be submitting to Congress my final budget proposal. Now, the law requires that I do that, but so far, the Congress has never passed a single budget that I've sent up there. As a matter of fact, they don't even pay much attention to it. <laughs> While I can't go into details at this time, you should know that it will keep us on the track to a balanced budget as it meets the Graham Rudman Hollings targets, which for the coming year are 100 billion uh, in 1990 and zero by 1993, if we continue and follow on this track. And this is achieved without raising taxes and without touching Social Security. You know, I keep reading that we must increase revenues to balance the budget. Well, over the last eight years, revenues to the federal government have increased by $375 billion, and mainly as a result of our tax cuts. And that isn't 
just uh, peculiar to us. If you look back, look back to Coolidge's time, when they cut tax rates, I think it was four times, the revenues to the federal government increased. And that happened also when Kennedy's tax cuts, finally implemented by President Johnson, went into effect. I, having a degree in that exotic subject of economics, I remember not too many things out of my studies, but I do remember a fellow named Eben Khaldun, lived in the 14th century. I didn't know they had economists back then. I thought everybody was happy. <laughs> <laughs> but Eben Khaldun said, in the beginning of the empire, the rates were low and the revenue was great. At the end of the empire, the rates were great and the revenue was low. So, uh, I, in all the arguments, but in going on up on the hill as to whether we can balance the budget without raising revenues, nobody brings up the fact that raise the revenues, or I mean raise the taxes, and the revenues are going to decline back to where they were once before. Well, I've enjoyed working with you over the last eight years and have appreciated your support, and we have made a difference. And those of us at this table, because of our work together, and take heart in knowing that our country is stronger and, and prosperous. But the struggle continues every day in the ma marketplace, and we must continue to innovate and create. I'm confident that George Bush, with your support, will continue us on the path we've taken and will protect the progress that we've made so far and will forge ahead to bring even greater prosperity to our country uh, and the world. Back on the mashed potato circuit, I was on that because when I was in Hollywood, if you don't sing or dance, you wind up as an after-dinner speaker. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I talked about a great many of these things here that, and government and criticized it for being uh, an adversary. And uh, I think that it's been proven that, as I say, that some of these things are, they can come about if we get out of your way and out of the people's way in this country and turn them loose as they were supposed to have been turned loose by the Constitution. So that's it. With that, I'll quit talking. And when we get finished, why, I'll go over there in the corner and we can each have an individual reading and a photo. Mr. President, we're very grateful to you. Uh, this is the Executive Committee. Of, we just wanted to express our very sincere thanks to you for not only the leadership that you provided this nation and the economic climate that has allowed the comeback of manufacturing, but your personal support for and involvement in the NAM. You come to our annual meeting six out of seven years, and the seventh year we didn't have the meeting, so uh, <laughs> your attendance is under the set. We are united in our appreciation for everything that you've done. We are united in our admiration of how you've done it, and you look so well. Uh, we are perhaps a little more weather-beaten ourselves than you are after you eight years in the pressure chamber here. But it's been our great pleasure to work with you, and our great thanks to you, sir, for the leadership and the cooperation that you've given to the country and to the NAM. Well, I thank you, and I remember with great pleasure addressing your annual conventions back there in those mashed potato circuit days. <laughs> it was both